ವರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನಂ ಮಂದಹಾಸುಚಿರಾಜ್ನಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರ್ನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನ್ಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ಟಿ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೋರ್ ಗನ್ಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಠೋರ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುಡಿಯೋ ಟಿಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ many times we have listened that what kind of company we kept we also become like that so our future our behavior is depends upon our company our association in the life of many devotees and many saints at the time of bhagwan swami narayan as well as even today we can see that previously if they have the bad companies then they became like that meaning vicious and after as they attain the company of saints and the devotees then the same person who was previously vicious become virtuous today we are going to listen about vera bai of upleta vera bai uh, he was living in the small village called upleta in uh, near junagadh meaning in junagadh district there before he made saints before he become a satsangi his life was totally out of human range meaning he was not like uh, one can call him as a human he was uh, because of a uh, bad company he was addicted to alcohol it meat and would harass and even kill the innocent people not only that but he became a notorious leader of a gang and because of him people even fear merely listening his name and he's he was doing like a robbery here and there and even kill the people for attaining something from them so this is what vera bai's previous life before he made saints and before he became a satsangi so this was happening for many years so the surrounding areas they were fear about his name and uh, his personality so virabai was from the kshatriya caste meaning his blood his uh, like his attitude is naturally to fight with the others that is also one reason the reason behind his previous behavior now one day as we know santos at the time of bhagwan swami narayan they were traveling here and there from village to village from home to home to preach bhagwan's message to others and lead the people on the way of righteousness so in the same way santos arrived in the village of upleta and there santos stay in the devotee's house and we know our santos daily routine was like uh different from the others meaning different from the householder duties while because from early in the morning santo woke up and after completing their all the duties meaning after becoming fresh and after taking a shower santo would sing a uh, prabhatias meaning a kirtans which specially for the morning time in a loud and not only that but santo also engaged themselves in doing dhyan meaning meditation uh, after doing puja they were doing kathas and dhun and many other things in this way 
that day passed with the devotion again in the evening the same thing repeat meaning aarti stuti dhun again katha not only that but in maharaj's time it was a, like a routine for the santo that late till the late night santo did not sleep and instead of sleeping early santo would uh, sing kirtans and in india we know that even at in a silent uh, one's voice can be heard for long a distance and in in the same way here in the village saints stay in the devotee's house and there they were <clears throat> performing all these duties meaning all this devotion like singing kirtans doing kathas in this way who are come in their contact and by observing their pious and unique behavior those who, uh, who are not believer who are not satsangi they become satsangi and this vera by once as santo visited a village and they were like in the morning they were singing uh, kirtans for maharaj so vera by listen those divine voices of the santo they were singing devotional kirtans at the time uh vera by thought something different like uh, i have never listened such kind of kirtans before so he desired to listen more and more so every day he he would listen the kirtans sung by santos in the morning and at late night so once virabai could not stop himself from going to where the santos stayed so one day he followed the sadhus to the assembly and at the time santo was uh, doing kir- uh, kirtan bhakti in the sabha so there were many other villagers and devotees they were also seated in the sabha and vira by enter so the santo also invite him like uh, welcome him and uh, santo sir oh vira by please come and sit in front in front row so vira by sat there and he listen santo's kirtan after two three kirtans done santo immediately began katha but santo's humble behavior impressed virabai even though he was very cruel he was very like impious he was vicious still he liked santo's uh, kathas and kirtans because santo's behavior santo's like uh, selflessness and we can say the santo's saintliness touched the heart of virabai and because of that he stay there even for listening katha otherwise he didn't have like interest in katha he had only interest in kirtans but then behavior uh, santosh behavior changed his heart and finally he stay there for listening katha and after listening katha even the words of the katha words of the santo they also touched the virabai's heart and because of that his heart changed his thought become change one after one as he listen katha and after katha virabha was thinking i i i am very uh, i am very grave sinner as i perform many vicious act before i made this santosh so as he had listened in the katha that one who performs uh, sinner deeds and uh, because of that he had to uh, take numerous birth and he had to suffer in the hell so in this way he had listen the punishment of the uh punishment of one sins so in this way he had listen and uh, because of that he himself thought for his own behavior that i i am cruel i kill many innocent people i rob many people in this way he was thinking his sins and finally he he realized his all of mistakes and his flaws now he had accepted himself in his heart that i am sinner 
before he made santo he was thinking that uh, what i am doing is right to take others uh, others things or others possession that's my duty that's not a sin what he was believe before he made a son and after listening katha from the santo he started totally change and he himself realized that what was i uh, what i was living my life that was not uh, suitable to any human being that was uh, like an animal so now he want to be changed himself and that is why he realized his mistakes but now what to do so as he was like repenting again and again in his heart in his mind and he was like uh he has remorse after realizing his flaws his mistakes and finally he became honest with the saints that i was not a prop i was not an human being even i have attained this human birth but i act as an animal i eat everything i drink alcohol and also kill many innocent people i even robbed many villages not people but many villages and in this way <clears throat> i committed many many sins even people fear merely by listening my name but today by listening your katha i realize that that was my mistakes that was my faults and because of my sins i will be punished by bhagwan not only this birth but even after this birth so please show me any way so that i can do something in remaining my life so that bhagwan would be complete upon me and i will be relieved from my sins as uh vera be confess his mistake his sins in front of saints so saints always there to wash someone's sins not by themselves but through the way of bhagwan so in the same way saints here gave bhagwan to vera bai saints uh explain vera bai that uh, bhagwan swami narayan is manifested on this earth and right now he is in garuda so if you accept his refuse meaning if you become followers of bhagwan swami narayan then your all of sins will be washed away merely by his wishes because he is the supreme almighty he is the all powerful and even uh he is powerful enough to kill in your sins and uh not only that but even he is so powerful that because of his wishes because of his uh merely by his divine vision you can attain the virtuous life so by listening this from the santo virabai realize and he like uh ex- experience something like peace uh now his grief because of his sins was not remain in his heart and as he decided to become a follower of bhagwan swami narayan he requested santo to please uh explain him like uh what was the code and conduct for becoming a satsangi and what rules he had to follow in this way he asked different different things for the satsang and santo when after won explain him uh, everything about our satsang santo also explain him the greatness and glory of bhagwan swami narayan how he, how he was uh, how bhagwan swami narayan is a supreme god and he also explain the different uh, miracles he had performed through his santos and devotees in this way virabha was convinced about bhagwan swami narayan supremacy and he finally he become a devotee and after becoming a devotee just as he was very uh like cruel and he was like vicious he never hesitated to kill any innocent people and even he ate meat and addicted himself to alcohol in this way 
how was his previous life meaning very very dangerous or we can say very cruel or we can say very addictive or very bad behavior in his previous life in the same way just as he was stick to his bad habits previously in the same way he changed all of his bad habits into habits of doing satsang as he accepted bhagwan's refuge has he become a devotee of bhagwan swami and so he firmly follow each and every rules given by bhagwan and santo to him as he was uh, informed about the rules not to steal not to eat meat not to drink alcohol so he follow each and every words of bhagwan and santo and he frequently visited garuda for doing maharaj darshan and not only that but even he stay there for many days to do the seva of santo and listening katha from santo so that he can be advanced in satsang he can understand uh, something more and more in satsang so that he stay there for many days and during his staying there in garuda he was doing seva during each and every samayo and utsav and we know as maharaj stay there in garuda so uh many many utsavs and celebrations maharaj frequently celebrated there in garuda so many devotees and many santos gathered there for the celebration and for the darshan of maharaj so at the time vera bhai was doing seva for santo and who were like devotees came uh from very far he was performing their sevas and he mostly performing the seva for the safety of saints meaning as a guard and uh not only that but even he was from a kshatriya caste still he was performing very low seva meaning he was cleaning the uh, ground or sweeping the ground or floor or even wash santo's clothes and uh the big utensils used for cooking food for the devotees so in this way he was doing that so also not only that but whoever like santos and devotees whoever ill vera pe perform their services meaning to f- feed them food wash their clothes if they want uh, if they need uh, hot water for taking a shower so vera bai provided them all these things in this way vera bai every time in each and every utsav samaya he was performing this seva without any ego without any like egoistic feelings in his heart he forgot that i i am uh, from the kshatriya caste and instead he believing himself as a devotee of bhagwan and believing that this seva i have attained is a great opportunity and no one else besides one who is graced by bhagwan himself can attain this seva so believing this understanding the glory of seva he performed seva without any selfish motto he even didn't uh, have any kind of like uh, wishes in his heart that by performing seva if santos and bhagwan become pleased upon me then uh, i'll ask these things from them no he didn't have any kind of personal or selfish motto in his heart uh, behind this seva so in this way he was performing selfless seva by uh, with the attitude of nirmani or we can say become very humble he performed seva and because of his seva bhagwan swami narayan as well as all of the santos and even devotees they also become pleased upon uh, virabai and finally as virabai received rajip by performing seva maharaj once also become pleased upon him and santo also become pleased upon him and finally once maharaj ask him vera bhai what is your wishes as i become pleased upon you by your seva by your humbleness so please reveal your inner wishes then vera bhai requested maharaj if you become please upon me then please do something so that i can uh, i can be relieved from my social duties and my family duties and i can engage forever in your service 
I can stay here in your company forever. So Maharaj also become again become pleased by listening Veda Bhai's wishes. Now the another incident happened which shows us the very uh, like uh, his uh, greatness because of following Bhagwan's rules. Even a small mistake he did, still he become humble and ask for forgiveness. Once he was uh, he was going to Garda for Maharaj Darshan, and we know at the time there were no any other particular medium of transportation, so he was walking from one place to another. So from his village, Upleta, he was traveling for Garda. And we know it has a great distance. So uh, on the way, he had to stay for a night in a particular village. And in the next day in the morning, he, according to Bhagwan's Agnya, he had to cleanse his teeth and after becoming fresh he, he take shower and after that he perform puja and then he walked further so we know in ancient time in previous time in india uh, people use a bubble stick for cleaning cleans his dad as a uh, use as a brush to cleanse their dad uh, their teeth so at the time uh Virabha was not at ho uh, home, so he had no any particular facilities or such kind of things with him. So he found a bunch of bubble stick there on the way, so he took one of them without asking anyone, because no one there. So he used it, and even after taking a shower, he performed his puja, and then he realized that I had taken the bubble stick without asking permission from its owner. So that my mistake, and even I broke Maharaj commands for me. So he found out, he asked the villagers, he went back to the village, he asked the villagers whose uh, farm near the way and finally he got that this person was the owner of that bubble sticks bunch and finally he asked for forgiveness not merely by folding his hands but even he performed downwards to that person and he asked for forgiveness that uh, my Bhagwan has given me commands uh, for all of us, all of his duties and uh, not to take anything without asking permission from the owner and I mistakenly, I take one of your bubble stick, so please forgive me. In this way, in actual sense, there is no any like prize for bubble stick because the stick was natural and there is no any particular prize for that. Still, he took that things without asking permission, without asking anyone. So. He asked for forgiveness. Then, by uh, looking at him, the person, the villagers, they ask, "Who are you?" Because he was like, uh, as a kshatriya, he was very like six feet high, and he was very strong in his appear, and uh, like he was in this way, he was like uh, looking like a very strong person. And why he was asking for forgiveness, even at the time, no one is caring for such kind of things. Meaning even take out anyone's possession or anyone's things without asking in this way. So the, the person asked him and Virabhai replied, you know the Virabhai of Upleta and he is standing in front of you. So merely by listening this, <laughs> all the people, they even for fear and after that they also surprised that Vera Bhai he asked forgiveness. How is it possible? Then Vera Bhai explained them that now I have uh, I have uh, I, I was not what you think about me. 
Now I become a duty of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, and according to his rules, I devote my whole life for his use. Meaning, I uh, live according to his commands. And as I forgot and uh, I break his rules, so that's why I coming here for ask asking forgiveness. So please for forgive me for my this misbehavior. In this way, he asked for forgiveness and uh, departed for Gadda. Here in Gadda, he there was some uh, any like festival and all many santos and devotees they gather here again, doing his seva, like becoming very humble and understanding the glory of seva. He was performing sevas there. Again, Maharaj asked him. Many santos, they were also become pleased upon him and they requested Maharaj, Maharaj, please become pleased upon this Virabhai because he was doing very, very humble seva for all of santos and all of devotees. He was not uh, thinking for his status. He, he was not thinking for his like uh, caste or nothing, but he was just doing seva only to please you. So be, please become pleased upon him. Then, Maharaj uh, omnisciently knew everything what was in Virabhai's heart. So he asked him, Virabhai, what was your wishes? Why are you doing this seva? Please ask something. Then Virabhai said, Maharaj, I do not want anything of this world because I do not need anything now after getting you and this santo. After getting this association of this pious santo and you, I didn't uh, need anything in, in in my life because I am uh, like fulfilled after getting your and your santo seva. So if you want to give me something, then please do something in my life so that uh, I can fully attach, I, I can fully engross in your seva and I dedicated my whole life for your seva. Then Maharaj says, it's okay. If this is your wish, then it will be happen. So after this incident, Virabha even departed for his village. He was living there. And as his own life is totally changed for Bhagwan, so he himself preached the same satsang to his family members. And the, his whole family also became a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And uh, now Maharaj blessed him for his wishes. So that's begun to happen. One after one, Virabha's family members capture in uh, one like uh, thesis and one after one because of illness. 22 persons died within a year and only Vera by himself remained alive. Besides him, all of 22 people, 22 persons from his family died in a year. And as they died due to illness, so for carrying their illness, Vera by had to um, spend lots of money. So he also like uh, he didn't have like now any kind of uh, remain like money or something. He had only his property with him. But as he performed all of final and funeral rites, all of the twenty-two people one after one, one after one, and even he performed all of their seva, and even he spent money, whatever he had for the medita medication for those family members. Finally, as he remained alone in a house, so once he decided, now this is daya for me of my Bhagwan, because now I am free to worship full time. And now I am uh, free to become a son of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So deciding this, he even sold out his home and his farm and everything. And whatever he get from that, he took 
everything with him and he left for Garuda. There he came and did the son of Maharaj. And he offered whatever money he get from sold, uh, selling his house and farm and whatever he gained, he offered everything to Bhagwan. Then Maharaj asked him, Maharaj knew everything about him, but still to reveal all these things to the other devotees, Maharaj himself asked him, Virabhai, why are you offering all of these things to me? I don't need these things. And as uh, uh, you, you have spent uh, more money for uh, curing illness of your family members, so now I think you don't have any money with you, so please accept this, take back this money and keep for yourself. Then Virabhai said, Maharaj, I do not want to go back. I have sold everything and I won't come here for permanently. Please accept me as your devotee and even initiate me as a sadhu. I want to dedicate my whole life for you. So Maharaj wanted to show this to the other devotees so that he had asked and uh, he had asked him. Uh, finally, Bhagwan fulfilled Virabhai's wishes and he initiated him and uh, named him Paramanand Swami. So Virabhai became a Paramanand Swami. Now according to saints rules, he followed each and every rules prescribed by Maharaj. And according to Maharaj Agnya, he was also traveling one place to another for preaching the satsang. Once, Maharaj, accompanied by many santos, staying in Amdavad and from there, Maharaj stay in Khokra, near the, uh, the place near the Amdavad. So there, the group of Lol Lolangar Bhavas, they were very cruel and they were like uh, kept weapons and everything and they were they like very cruel, not hesitate to kill any innocent people or any innocent saints. And they have the jealousy with Bhagwan Swami and his santo because as Santo's behavior was very humble and very selfless, so people also become devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And as people become a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, so they didn't give anything to those low longer bhavas because they they were uh, addicted to alcohol and they even uh, use marijuana, meaning bhang and other things, uh, and even they. The whole day, like they desire to eat very delicious foods. In this way, they were not a proper renunciant, and that's why people stopped to give them money and food and everything. So, these Lolangar Bhavas, they decided to kill Bhagwan Swaminarayan, Santos, and finally they decided to kill even Bhagwan himself. So, according to their plan, they came there where Bhagwan Swaminar was staying. At the time, Bhagwan was eating food. And at the time, the Lo uh, group of Lulangar Bhavas, they came there, arrived there, and they held the weapons in their hands and they uh, tried to uh, kill Santo. So even they uh, killed some of Santo. And finally, as he ar uh, they arrived, to kill Bhagwan. So Bhagwan had many parts of like Sura Khachar, Alaya Khachar, Sumla Khachar and many other Kathi devotees with him and many other parts of, like Bhaguji and some brave persons. So they ask permission from Maharaj. Maharaj, if you give us permission, then we will show them our power. So Maharaj, please grant us the permission. And Maharaj grant because they killed Santo. So Maharaj grant permission to the devotees and parsats so to protect the Santo. So as these Kati devotees and parsats they use their sword upon those Lulangar Bhavas and some Kati devotees they killed four of the leader of the Lulangar 
and the remaining run away but all the santos remain inside the home and parmanand swami as he was from the kshatriya caste so his blood also become like boil meaning he also desired to fight with the uh, lolangar bavas because they have killed our santos so virabai even though he become a sant as a parmanand swami still he decided to fought with the lolangars and Sri Ji Maharaj had denied Santo to use any weapon. Even Maharaj had given command, if someone who speak ill for Santo, for someone or uh, even the ill people, they beat him. But still, the saint's duty is to wish good for that people. Not even thinking bad for anyone. so how is it possible to take a weapon in one's hand but parmanand swami forgot everything and he even jumped out with a sword and he also fought with the lolangar bavas and in this fight he is one of years one of year cut out but still he didn't aware about that then after the fight was done after finishing that maharaj was taking care of all of parsas and the devotees if they are injured so he was found like maharaj found uh, parmanand swami missing his ear then uh, and blood coming out from there maharaj asked him parmanand swami what's happened to you are you injured by lolangar bavas meaning they beat you then parmanand swami realized his mistake that i again broke maharaj rules for me now he asked for forgiveness maharaj please forgive me because uh, because of this fighting because of our santos were killed by this lolangar bava so i cannot stop myself and i myself also joined this parsad and duties and i don't know when and how my ear were cut off in the fighting so in this way parmanand swami asked for forgiveness but maharaj said no this time you had committed mistake and now it is not worthy to remain in renunciant life meaning you are not proper for my sant so maharaj himself gave him agnya to remove the saffron clothes and uh wear white clothes and remain as a parsad so parmanand swami had to do that and now he become a parsad not a sant and because of that incident parmanand swami himself think for his own own self and he was uh thinking for very deep within and he was like he had remorse in his heart and he was repenting for his missed behavior so that he had to change the clothes meaning he had to become parsad even after becoming a son so he was uh, now meditating upon form of bhagwan swami narayan day and night and doing uh, chanting his name on his mala in this way he passed most of his time for meditation and bhajan of bhagwan swami narayan finally was what's happened one day he was uh, like meditating in the form of bhagwan swami narayan and after some time he found something as he opened his eyes then one after one black persons came out from his body so he w- himself was surprised that who these persons who stay in myself in this body so he asked them who are you then one after one this uh, those black persons that came out from swami's body they explained to swami swami we are like calm krodh meaning we are feelings of lust anger arise jealousy meaning we are the vices we are staying inside you but now you are performing this meditation and bhajan throughout your day 
So we cannot be able to remain in your body. So, so we are coming out of your body and we will not be able to enter again into yourself. So in this way, the personified form of all of vices came out of Parmanand Swami's body. This is what the power of Bhagavan Swami and Santo, because Virabhai was very cruel before, but as he came in contact with the Santo, his life totally changed. And he even dedicated himself for Bhagavan Swami Narayan. Not only that, but he even uh, acted in such a way that all of his vices came out in personified form from his body. So this is what the many things we can uh, learn from this story of Veda by that uh, first the power of association, second thing as we um, even made any mistake in our life we should be open with the Santo and Puja Guruji so that they can give us the uh, solution or atonement for our sins or our mistakes. And again, if Bhagwan or Santo give us the like hard for punishment for our misbehavior, for our mistakes, then without becoming discouraged, we should follow that Bhagwan's Agnya and Santo's Agnya. And because of that, we will be redeemed for, from all of our vices and become pure. And as we become pure, Bhagwan will become pleased upon us. The another point we can get from this story is uh, getting Rajipo from uh, get, getting Rajipo by performing selfless service. So this is what all the summarized point from this story. That we pray to Bhagwan that uh, we will also become the same. Uh, we also become virtuous as Virabai. Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhakti Dhar Matmajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Bhaji Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai